Okay, now for the next part. And this is a really difficult part, adding all this water. So I think mostly we're going to be using cobalt blue. And one of the ways we're going to like, how can I put it? The word that comes to mind is damage limitation or just increasing our chances of success, right? That's it. So one of the ways we're going to increase our chances of success with this is to make a big mix. So the bigger your mix is, then the more likely that you're going to be successful with this. And that means a lot of paint. Okay, and then also I need to make my darker mix. And maybe I should make that now, to be honest. Um, so I think I might have some phthalo blue in that later. And also I'm going to have ripples in the water. And so I'm going to use phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, and a touch of yellow ochre, which is already there. But let's add some more. Okay, make that maybe a bit bluer. And I think that that will do. Okay, so I think I need more of this and maybe a touch of this blue, darker blue. Okay, a lot more water. Okay, I think I'm ready. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Okay, so keep it nice and wet. The paper is slightly tilted. As long as it's wet, we're safe. So, so far, not so bad. But when we get to these figures, that's when we're going to start to have a lot of trouble. And maybe I shouldn't even try to go around them. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> Should I just go over them? Mm. Well, at least their heads. So this is like we're now into danger zone because this is where we're getting caught up with details and there's a big risk. We're going to slow down so much that this paint is going to dry out and we're going to get a hard edge. So just re-wet everything as much as possible to try and stop that happening because when I re-wet above not completely but the paint is running down and it's keeping stuff lower down wet still okay now I need to switch to a smaller brush And I cannot stress enough that although you're doing something very detailed, this all needs to be done quickly. And in my original painting, 
I I did a better arrangement of the rocks because I had them just connected here and that was better because it meant less of this messing around trying to paint between them and you know what I think I'm just going to paint over that figure that could be a big mistake but I don't think so and We'll see what happens. Okay, and I'm even going to spray this now. Because if it's still quite wet, you shouldn't get that speckled effect. And maybe those little tiny bits of white maybe they're okay but I got rid of them anyway okay there we go and so now and can you see how it's dried off in that corner there and we're getting a line and I'm just going to re-wet that again because I don't like that. And now I'm adding some uh, darker blue. Like that. Wow. And I have perhaps overdone it. <laughs> but I'm kind of glad about that because sometimes you do have to overdo it a bit because it it teaches you like the limits or what you can achieve you know so one of the problems that beginners have I'm darkening the bottom bit by the way one of the problems the beginners have is they're so careful which I can understand I totally get it but if you're really careful it's like you're now this is pure water I'm using here. If you're really careful, then one of the problems with that is you're kind of operating within narrow limits, which sounds good in a way. It's like being careful, but it's almost like you're flying the plane on autopilot. And of course, in a way, you're not really going to learn like fully what you can do. You, you have to take things to the extreme, even though, oh, this has dried off, this bit here. You have to take things to the extremes. You have to push and not be afraid of screwing up the painting. I, I have to stress that because it's, it's not a fun experience sometimes, you know, especially when you're doing a video. <laughs> It's not fun to uh, sometimes um, push the painting too far just to see what happens, to, to kind of operate in that scientific kind of frame of like, mm, I wonder what happens if I'll do this. Oh no, what a disaster, I've screwed up the painting. But why you have to do that is that's how you really begin to understand the medium and what it can achieve, yeah? We're, we're, we try so very hard to, and for good reason, to be careful, right? Tread very carefully, right? 
in life, in social interactions. We, we try to tread very carefully, right? Because we don't want to be a jerk and we don't want to go around upsetting people and stuff like that. And we're the same in painting, you know, we don't, you know, we don't want to paint something that is so stupid that everybody's just going to laugh at us. You know what I mean? Um, we're going to like try to paint a lovely little picture. But really, in reality, you need to really push it a lot. I, I I think anyway, and 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 it becomes fun. It's it's not with everything. If you if you've got your own style, but then even then, if you're not like a professional, and already you've got your own style, I would say uh, maybe lose it for a while, <laughs> and experiment and uh, push it because. Like I heard another artist say, you'll never lose your uniqueness. It's like almost you can't get away from it. But if you're not too careful, you can make it very limited. And if you do something very different, then it will slowly get incorporated back into your style. And that will make it even more interesting. And I've convinced myself <laughs> by what I just said. I, th I think that's true. Take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Yeah, you have to work it out for yourself. They're, these are just my thoughts, yeah? Um, that's what I would say to myself, though. I, I would say to myself, look, if you learn something very different, then you're going to eventually incorporate that into your normal style, hopefully. And it's just going to make it even more exciting, more interesting than before, more unique. OK, there we go. Not not too bad, but my original was better. Um, I can't show it to you, but basically why this is so-so after all what I said, is because the marks I'm adding now, they're not, they're not dissolving into the paint, paint underneath because the paint underneath has dried. Um, and in my original painting, the paint underneath was a bit wetter and they dissolved and it looked really, really beautiful. Just a minute, I'll try and, I'll try and get it. Okay, stick these earphones in. So this is what I'm talking about. So look at these marks. They're very soft. And the reason is the paint underneath was wetter and they just dissolved into it. Here, it wasn't so wet and the marks just didn't dissolve. We've got a few nice dry brush effects. And you can do this with your finger and soften it. That works fairly well. And it's not too bad. It's actually not too bad. It's passable. But, but that, whoops, goodness me. But that, that's better. I prefer that. So there you go. Um, okay, let's leave this to dry. Just softening some of these marks with my finger. And it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I haven't made any super big mistakes. Leave it to dry and then let's work on the shadows on the rocks. In the rocks. On the rocks? In the rocks? No idea. Okay, see you in a minute.